First Castle Spit. Lying on the southern coast of the UK, it guards the western approaches to the Solent Waters between the Isle of Wight and the mainland. With its classic recurved hook end, the Spit is 2.5 kilometres long. Bordered to its northeast by the Keyhaven and Millington Marshes, and to the south, the grey waters of Christchurch Bay and the English Channel. From its start, you can walk westwards all the way back to Poole in Dorset. Its eastern end is dominated by the large artillery castle built for Henry VIII as a protection measure against invasion from France and the Holy Roman Empire. Once occupied by parliamentary forces in the Civil War and prison to Charles I before his execution in 1649, it was extended during the Napoleonic Wars. Now maintained by English heritage, it houses a number of military artefacts and displays, as well as the remnants of an 1880s military narrow-gauge railway. This lovely lighthouse is one of several at the Spit End. Two low lighthouses can be seen on the castle walls, but this is the High Lighthouse. Built by Trinity House in 1867, it stands 23 metres high above the water, and it was automated in 1923. Today, it burns with an intensity of 7,140 candela, and its light can be seen 13 nautical miles away. The spit is formed from loose flint pebbles, eroding away from the cliffs further west at Barton-on-Sea and High Cliff. Centuries of cliff collapse have been caused by a combination of soft geology and exposure to the strong prevailing southwesterly waves. It's been a process that has provided plenty of material for longshore drift to carry along this coastline. Where the coast took a sudden sharp turn northwards towards Lymington, each material carried along by longshore drift deposited and built up on the seabed out towards the Isle of Wight. Eventually, the deposits broke the surface of the sea and the spit was formed. The word hurst is from Middle Ages English and it is thought to mean sandbank. What's special about Hurst Spit is its recurved hook end the product of countless short-term changes in the wind and therefore the wave entering direction. As a consequence of these short-term changes, the spit has reorientated itself at the very end. Of course, the fierce tidal flows through the narrow stretch of the western Solent also erode the spit end, thus slowing its growth and progress out towards the Isle of Wight. Today, this vast shingle beach provides a natural barrier to the parts of the western Solent, absorbing the storm wave energy and so creating behind it a low energy environment in which mudflats and marshes can develop and flourish. Keyhaven and Lymington Marshes are a site of special scientific interest and a national nature reserve protected not only for their brackish water environment, but also because of their international importance for breeding, feeding and roosting birds. There is no public access to these tidal flats. They are such a fragile environment. But visitors can gain stunning views across the marshes from the sea walls and the coastal roads that run along the old former coastline. The views from the Hearst Castle Spit itself are pretty impressive too. In this low energy, wave-free environment, mud and silt accumulate until the deposits break the water surface itself. Whereupon, these sediment banks are colonized by pioneering salt-tolerant plants. The roots of these first plants trap more sediment and more silt. Over time, their decaying remains add new organic matter to the sandbank. And so, the environmental conditions become changed. This allows new plant types to start colonizing the area. This gradual process of recolonizing by new plants as the environmental conditions change 
is known as vegetation succession. Over time, vegetation succession will lead to the development of a final climax vegetation community. In the UK, a well-established marshland would be comprising ash, alder or oak woodlands. The rich bird life, from Dunlin and Little Terns to black-tailed godwits and egrets, is not the only reason for the marsh's protected status. There is plenty here for botanists too. Valuable eelgrass beds provide a nursery for marine life. The mud flats and even the shingle spit itself are colonised by plants such as glassworts, yellow horned poppies, sea campions and sea grasses. It is an area of extraordinary biodiversity. But this biodiverse rich environment is under threat. Slow erosion rates on the cliffs along Christchurch Bay. Engineers constructed large groins to trap the sediment carried along the shoreline by longshore drift. The result of all this hard engineering is that over the last century, Hurst Spit has been starved of shingle. Winter storms can remove beach material offshore very rapidly. So regular shingle replenishment now takes place, and stone rip wrap and groins protect the spit's thinnest width. In this way, the sea doesn't breach through to the protected marshlands behind. Even with this replenishment and regrading of the beach, the salt marshes behind still erode at three metres a year. Sea level rise, leading to overtopping by storm waves, animal grazing on the marshes. The 4,000 daily visitors to the castle during the summer months. These are other threats to this special environment. But with careful management, by a range of organisations from wildlife trusts to national park and local councils. The spit and its precious marshes are being well managed. With luck, they will continue to provide much enjoyment and sanctuary for both people and wildlife for many years to come. <laughs>